In today's video, we are going to see how to authenticate users in the Xamarin Forms application. We will be using Firebase as the backend system. By the end of the video, you will know how to sign up new users, how to authenticate users using an email and a password, and how to recover a password when you lose it. If you are new to the channel, consider subscribing. The link to the source code will be available in the description. Let's get into it. I have already created a Xamarin form solution. To keep things simple, the solution only targets iOS. All views have already been created. We will focus on the business logic of the app. Before using Firebase in the application, we need to create a Firebase project that will be connected to our application. I go to the Firebase console, I create a new project, let's call it Xamforms Firebase Health. I hit continue. I disable Google Analytics because I don't need it. I hit continue. Once my project is created, the next step is to register my app in this project. On the overview page, I click on the iOS icon. That brings me to the registration page. The first info we need to provide is the bundle ID. You can find it in the info plist file in the Xamarin solution. I set the app nickname to Xam Forms Firebase Hoth. At this point, a file has been generated. I save it. The registration is done. The next step is to set up authentication by email and password. On the overview page, I click on the authentication card. In the users tab, I click on setup sign in method. In the sign in method tab, I click on email and password. I toggle the enable switch to enable authentication. Let's save the configuration. So we have registered our application and set up configuration. Let's move to Visual Studio now. Let's add the Firebase iOS config we saved earlier. The file is named Google Service Info.plist. It contains identifiers such as API key, database, URL, and so on. To interact with Firebase, we will need two dependencies Xamarin.firebase.ios.core and Xamarin.firebase.ios.auth. Let's install them. Now that we have NuGet packages installed, we need to initialize Firebase in the application. In app delegate file, I use the app class located in the firebase.core namespace and I call the configure method. Firebase is now configured. The next step is to implement authentication logic in view models. Let's start by checking whether a user is signed in. If it's not the case, we will display the login page. We will put the logic in home view model. In the constructor, I had a method check whether the user is signed in. Firebase SDK will tell us if a user is signed in. For code located in the shared project to interact with code from the target project, we need a shared interface. In the common folder, I create an interface called iAuthentication Service. I had a method called is signed in. Let's go back to the home view mode. In the check whether the user is signed in method, we get an instance of the authentication service by using the resolve method from the dependency service class. We call the is sign in method. If not true, we navigate to the login page. Let's add an implementation to the iAuthentication Service interface. In the iOS project, I create a class called Firebase Authentication. This class implements the interface iAuthentication Service. Let's implement the isSignIn method. I use the auth object, which is a singleton, and check the current user. If it's not null, 
it means the user is signed in. In app delegate, we register the interface as a dependency. Let's run the project. There is no sign in user. I have been redirected to login page. Login view model as a sign up command bound to a button. When the user clicks on this button, the sign up page should be displayed. Let's add code for that. In the command implementation, I use the method go to async on the current instance of the shell. I pass new user page as an argument. This is the sign up form. Let's run the project. If I click on the sign up button, the sign up form shows up. Let's add a method to create user in the authentication service. Let's edit the I authentication service. I had a new method signature, I call it create user. This method takes three parameters, a username, an email, and a password. Let's edit the implementation. I use the create user async method on the auth object. In return, I get a not result object. The create user async method takes the email and the password as argument. Once the user is created, we can add additional information to his profile. The auth result object as the property user. I use the profile change request method on the user object to get a user profile change request object. I set the display name to the username. I commit the changes. At this point, a user and his profile have been created. I return true. In the catch block, I display the error message in the console. I return false to indicate that the creation failed. You can catch specific Firebase exception, but to keep things simple, I catch general exception here. Let's go back to the new user view model. The signup command will wrap signup logic. I need an instance of the authentication service. I call the create user method and I pass the username, email, and password as argument. If the result is true, the user is redirected to the home page. Otherwise, we display a message to the console. Let's try to add a user. Patrick will be the username. I put my email address. I put a password. If I click on the sign up button, I'm able to log in. Let's check in Firebase console. You can see that the user has been created successfully. In my early test, I add an issue with keychain sharing. To resolve that issue, make sure the bundle signing is set correct. Let's move to how to sign out. The application has a menu item in the flyout. The menu item command is bound to a sign out command. Let's create the command in the view model. In app shell view model, I create a new command called sign out command. In the action behind the command, I use the authentication service. I call the sign out method. After sign out, we should display the login page. The sign out method doesn't exist yet. Let's generate it. Let's also update the implementation. I call the sign out method on the auth object, and that's it. Let's test out. If I click on the sign out, I'm out and the login page shows up. The next step now is to sign in user. The user will provide an email and a password. By clicking on the sign in button, if the authentication is successful, the user will be redirected to the home page. Let's update the iAuthentication service interface. 
I had a new signature method. I call it sign in. It takes an email and a password as parameters. In the implementation, I call sign in with password async method. I pass the email and password as arguments. I use the get ID token async method on the user object to obtain an authentication token. Let's go to the login view model. I add a sign in command. This command is bound to the sign in button. In the action, I call the sign in method from authentication service. We are not going to do anything with the token here. Let's test the login. I had my email and my password, and boom, it works. In the next section, we will implement password recovery. In the login view, there is a forgot password button. When the user clicks on this button, the forgot password page should be displayed. In login view model, I add a new command, forgot password command. In the command action, I use the go to async method from the shell. I pass the root to the forgot password page. And let's test it. If I click on the button, the forgot password page shows up. Let's implement the logic behind password recovery. In the I authentication service interface, I add a new signature method. I call it reset password. It takes an email as a parameter and returns a task. In the implementation, I call send password reset async on the auth object. I provide the email as an argument. When the user enters his email address, he can click on the send button to request password recovery. The button is bound to a reset password command. Let's create it. In forgot password view model, I had reset password command. In the action beyond the command, I call the reset password method on the authentication service. I pass the email as the argument. After the request, I display an alert message and redirect the user to the login page. Let's test. I enter my email address. I click on the send button. After a few minutes, I receive a link to recover my password. I click on the link and follow the indications. I was able to set a new password. I'm going to wrap this tutorial here. You can find the source project and useful links in the description below. If you get any values from this video, hit the like button and subscribe. Thanks for watching and see you next time.